Hey, welcome to the Strong Roots Podcast. My name is Kristen Hill, and we are so excited that you're tuning in today. Our prayer is that you would move one step closer to Jesus through this series. So go ahead and check out this next episode. Welcome back, Strong Roots. We are in our fatherhood season, and I'm here with Rick, my father-in-law, which is perfect. And he is such an amazing godly man, and I look up to him, and I look up to the way that he raised his boys. So today we are talking about raising boys. He has two sons, and honestly, I can't imagine asking anyone better, and I kind of forced him to be here. So <laughs> I gave him no other options. I was like, there's no one else I want to interview. So thank you so much for being here. I'm so glad. It's my pleasure, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, you ready? I'm ready. Okay, so what does your journey into fatherhood look like? A journey into fatherhood? Yeah. Okay. I don't know that one. It, you didn't prompt me with that question. So, um, Stumbled into it. I got married and uh, the kids came along. and uh, Were and there hard pregnancies? Oh, pregnancies were the hardest part of my life was Satoko being pregnant. Yeah. She had a hard time being pregnant and and it was the hardest part of my life. Yes. So, yeah, it was it was really hard. Why um, would you, what made it hard? Uh, she was so sick and I wanted my kids to be healthy, so I tried to force food on her and she had morning sickness and didn't want food and so yeah. I cooked a hot dish for the first time in my life and she wouldn't eat it. <laughs> I wanted her to get calcium, so I'd put eggs, including the eggshells, in a milkshake. <laughs> Came out like sand, but she didn't like that either. <laughs> Especially when she's sick, probably, right? <laughs> yeah, that probably helped her stay sick. <laughs> She would eat bananas, so I stuffed bananas in her all the time. She won't touch a banana now. She won't. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, being, being pregnant was very hard. And she got depressed and mm -hmm. um, took some uh, morning sickness medicine for Enoch, our older son. And um, they outlawed that by the time John came along. Wow. And so, obviously, there was some risk with that medicine. Um, and she got some different medicine then for John, and that one caused her severe depression mm. until we realized it was the medicine and got her off of that. She was severely depressed, thinking suicide, asking for abortions, and, yeah. and uh, it was really hard for both of my sons. I remember going out for myself for a walk and just happening to go in by a friend's house, different friends each time, and going and knocking on their door just to chat and they'd open the door and I burst out crying. Yeah. I just, you know, it's Which like, is not like you. That's not like me. No. Yeah. So yeah, being, having Satoko be pregnant was the hardest part of my life. Yes. Yeah. And that was the journey into being a dad. Yeah. yeah that, was, <laughs> Prepared that, you. that was a start. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. So what have you learned as being important in raising sons? Well, important in raising sons. It's it's hard because it's different at every age, you know. Yeah. <laughs> when they're so, uh, I think the important thing to me was just being there, being present in their lives, so that and and being an example to them. You know, I rarely planned any teaching moments for my sons, but by being present in their lives, they happened all the time, um, <clears throat> and by being open about my own life and yeah. how I made decisions and what my priorities were, they just kind of observed and absorbed all of that from my example. And, you know, since they observed everything, I had to live a consistent life so that, you know, they didn't pick up the bad things out of it. So I had to make sure there weren't bad things in my own life. Right. Um, <clears throat> When they were teenagers, and well before that, but it's more so as teenagers, if you want your boys to share with you what's going on in their lives, you have to make it a positive experience for them. Right. And so if they come and share something that's not so positive that you want to correct them on, mm -hmm. you can't overreact to it. You have to make it a positive experience for them. So somehow you have to correct them in a way that won't hurt your relationship um, and that they'll want to continue to share things like that with you. Um, so that's, 
that's a, a tricky little thing, but you have to make it a positive experience for them. If it's something good that they share with you, yeah. then you can dole out the praise. But likewise, don't overreact to it because uh, teenagers don't like false praise. They don't like uh, an overreaction. That is so and true. So don't overreact. Um, sometimes they'd come to me for answers on some decision they had to make. And being an Enneagram type five, I'm really good at seeing the grayness in any decision. It's not black and white. There's good sides to both sides of a decision. That's why it's a decision. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'd help them think through the pros and cons of both sides. You know, if, if you do this, it'd be good, but that might not be so good. And if you do it the other way, same thing. And then I'd say, you decide. Yeah. And that would really frustrate them sometimes because they didn't want the burden of the decision. And, they, you know, then um, the responsibility is theirs. They've made the decision. And so, but I'd, I'd make them do that and take on that responsibility. Though I might uh, slant their decision by the way I painted the pros and cons. You know, I'd say, well, yeah, you're free. You could do that. But then if you do, you'll lose my trust and you'll be grounded for the rest of your life. You, know? <laughs> you decide. Yeah. You know? yeah. So um, I had some say in it, but I'd want yeah. them to make the decision. So, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. And to go off of the first thing you shared about teaching your kids along the way, I mean, even watching him as a grandparent, he they'll find bugs and measure them and I, he makes everything a learning experience which is really inspiring because it's not like you tell my kids oh we're gonna go outside and go on a bug experiment hunt it's just when things happen you are really good at taking advantage of whatever situ learning situation that presents itself to you and I really really like that and I love what you said about um, not overreacting or underreacting and you are John still goes for you to you for advice and you still tell him you decide yeah. which i think is it's a really good model i really respect it so it's all well because i don't want to tell them one thing they, they might regret their decision if i and i then i'm responsible i want them to take on that burden and i think it models god, like god gives us free will and he says mm -hmm. here's the best way to live but he doesn't force our hand right and i think that's a really great reflection of god yeah so that's great thanks. answers. I yeah. love it. Okay. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> so what characteristics of God as a father do you most want to emulate? You know, when I think of God as a father, God the Father, I think of the characteristics of he's omniscient, mm -hmm. he's omnipresent, he's omnipotent, and I can't emulate any of those. You know? <laughs> so, I was wondering where you're going. I'm like, wow, okay. So, uh, <laughs> So I've, I'll, I'll pick the spirit, yeah. Because and I'll pick the fruit of the spirit as yes. something I want to emulate. I can strive for that. And so there's love, and I want my boys to know that I love them. Yeah. And there's joy. I want the home to be a joyful place for them. There's peace. And so I want to limit the turmoil within the house um, so that they can have a nice place that's peaceful for them. Uh, patience. I always want to be patient with patient with my boys. Um, kindness. I wanted to set an example of kindness, but I wasn't very good at it, I don't think. I never thought of myself as kind. But both my sons are kinder than I am, so at least uh, <laughs> they grew up better than uh, my example. I disagree with that. You are so kind. Well, You can be very straightforward. A, yeah. But I say you are so kind. Oh, but anyways, thank you. Yeah. So as, as I've matured. Maybe when they were <laughs> younger, I never thought of myself that way. Goodness. I think of that as integrity, and I want my boys to be good, yes. meaning to have integrity. Faithfulness. My boys could always trust me. They could count on me. I was faithful yes. to them. That's true. Gentleness. I didn't get angry often. I didn't lose my temper at them often. So I guess mm -hmm. that's gentle. Um, and self-control. I rate, I, I rate this as a really important thing for being successful in life. No matter how you define success, you need self-control to attain it. Yeah. And sometimes we think of self-control as the ability to resist temptation. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, 
I think of it kind of the other way as, as self-discipline, the ability to make yourself do something yeah. that you don't want to do, but you know you Ooh, should do it. That's good. And so if, if you think of that way, then um, it applies to homework, exercise, eating right, reading the Bible, yeah. apologizing, doing the right thing, and so much more. And if you train your kids to make themselves do things that they don't want to do, right. but that they know they should do, and you can train them to do those things, that's training them to develop self-discipline, and they'll be successful at anything in life. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the, the fruit of the Spirit. I think focus on that, and that's the characteristics that I think are really important. Absolutely. I like that a lot. Did you ever struggle? I don't know. I guess you're a very intentional person in, in everything you do. Did you ever struggle with being intentional with your kids growing up, or has that come easy to you with all these things? I, I feel like I was not intentional with my kids except in being present being yeah. there yeah you know i didn't i i didn't take you know teach them i didn't say oh i'm going to teach them a lesson on this yeah um uh, i didn't i didn't get into uh you know making them do chores yeah i i, I regretted that often i felt like oh i need to give chore, a chore list to my kids, but I try to get them to do something and it was so hard. It was so much easier to just do it myself. Yeah. And so I often worried, oh, are they, gonna, are they going to learn how to work or yeah. just be lazy all their lives because I'm not making them do chores? Well, they turned out, they both turned out fantastic in that way. Right. Absolutely. And so I would say, no, I was not intentional in accomplishing things with my kids but I was I was intentional at just being there being present being present um, you know and maybe having activities to, to be present with them right absolutely oh, it's so important so, so yeah. what roles did grace and discipline play in your parenting yeah well you know we didn't have many rules for our boys but bedtime and curfew were big ones that we did have i just didn't want to lay awake wondering where they were <laughs> you know where yeah. where are they are they safe are they going to come home um so we set up an, a strict curfew and they'd come home just a few minutes a couple of minutes late and they'd ask to look for grace it was just a couple of minutes you know but if they got grace there, then it would be five minutes and then 10 minutes and then longer. And so to establish that grace was not automatic, we made a, we meaning I, <clears throat> made a rule that they would be grounded for w one day for every minute that they were late. Wow, that's that good. seems pretty strict. <laughs> they thought it was. <laughs> and uh, if they came up with excuses, unforeseen things that caused them to be late, I'd say that they should be responsible and plan a cushion. There's no harm in getting home five or 10 minutes before the curfew. You could leave your friend's house a little bit early and then if something comes up, you'll get home on time. That's responsibility. And so, you know, they'd come up with excuses and I didn't necessarily give them grace. And then, uh, you know, then they'd say, oh, well, I got a ride from my friend Andrew, you know, and he promised that he'd bring me home on time, but the movie wasn't done, and so he wouldn't leave. And so he, we got home late, and I'd say, well, no, you're still, you're still grounded. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you got to pick more trustworthy friends. And he's grounded from seeing you, too. And so mm -hmm. yeah. so uh, he'll, he'll hopefully learn, or else you need new friends that are more trustworthy. Yeah. Um, and they'd also say, oh, Dad, I, I got delayed a little bit, and I, you know, did you want me to speed on the way home? And I said, nope, no way that you should speed on the way home, and you're still right. grounded. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and then one time they were, you know, there were lots of groundings then um, for a few days at a time. But they learned to respect the curfew, but then one day they were 30 minutes late. Oof. One of them, I don't remember which one. And they were grounded for 30 days. Wow. 
And that was a big deal. And But they were repentant and had a good attitude. And after seven days, we showed them grace. And, yeah. and I don't remember any issues with the curfew after that. So it, it worked out. But that was, you know, I, I think enforcing the rules you set is really important. Otherwise, your kids don't think you mean what you say. Absolutely. And so you have to enforce the rules you set. Um, but likewise, don't set too many rules because you don't want too many battles. With Absolutely. Kids. That's, you know, try to have as few rules as possible. Yeah. Because you have to stick with the ones you set. But there's room for grace. Mm-hmm. And there's room to admit that, oh, this is an exception to the rule or... I'll just give you grace just because I love you. you know, there's, so there's room for grace. Yeah. But you need to make sure they understand that you mean what you say. Mm-hmm. And that starts from age one. Yes. <laughs> you know, as soon as they can understand what you say. Yes. Um, so many parents say, you know, stop doing that. Yep. And the kids know that they don't have to stop doing it. Yep. Because mom, until she says it three times, it doesn't mean anything. Yep. Maybe mm-hmm. even then. So. Right. Absolutely. Okay, I'm going rogue. And Uh I ask you something that I didn't prepare you for. Uh, Okay. (laughs) So something that I really respect about the way you guys parented is being Christians, both John and Enoch didn't have sex before marriage. And they followed Jesus in that way. How, like, I feel like so many parents are like, Mm. how did you do that? I mean, I know it was by the grace of God, but is there anything intentional you did to lead them down that righteous road? No. Nothing <laughs> intentional. Yeah. Um, I think I think it just goes back to the same things. We tried to have them good Christian teaching. Yeah. Um, keep them in church so that they had Christian friends. And, um, but they also had secular friends. They went to public school, and there yeah. weren't a lot of Christians there. Um, and I don't know. It's the I always said that Satoko and I didn't know how to parent well, so God gave us easy boys. Yeah. And so it was the grace of God. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> because we never, we never did anything super intentional there. We made. You know, we made it known to them that we expected there to be no sex before marriage, but it wasn't something we emphasized. Yeah. Um, And, you know, neither of them really ever developed a close relationship with a girl in high school. Yeah. And that made it a lot easier. (laughs) Made it a lot easier. Right. (laughs) So um we we sometimes worried about that yeah (laughs) and and like it's biggest blessing ever but they never formed a real close relationship they'd they'd go on dates but never uh never get really close with someone right so that was that was a blessing and i'll just say it's the grace of god it's not not our parenting right yeah and an answer to prayer i'm sure i know satoko prayed a lot she she was the prayer warrior yeah yeah. She always talks about how she prayed for their spouses too. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. As soon as they were born, she was praying that they for their spouses. Yeah. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. So, Rick, what would you say was a distraction for fatherhood? And how did you combat it? I think a distraction was my own selfishness. Yeah. I wanted to have time for myself. I wanted to play racquetball. I wanted to play golf and and I couldn't, you know, <laughs> that's pretty much it. We started this interview with the uh, saint talking about the importance of being there. Right. And you can't go play golf on a Saturday afternoon and, <laughs> and be there for your kids. Right. Um, and so I gave up golf and tennis and racquetball for 10 or 20 years. And when kids got older, I took them up again. And yeah. I, as long as I could anyway, I can still golf. <laughs> no yes. racquetball and tennis anymore. But, uh, um, yeah, that was it. I, I think just selfishness is a distraction from parenthood. Oh, yeah. So. Was it a sacrifice? Was it hard? Yeah, at first, but 
I guess I live vicariously through my kids, yeah. <laughs> through my sons. And so you just got to get into their thing. Yeah. Um, going to a soccer game, <laughs> watching soccer games from young kids from the sideline <laughs> gets old pretty fast. It's like, uh, I would rather be doing some activity myself than sitting on the sideline here. Yes. Um, so, yeah, that's a sacrifice. But watching the kids and being living through them, that, that was good. Right. Absolutely. So what do you wish you would have known about raising boys 30 years ago? I wish I would have known how proud I'd be of, of them and how well they turned out so that I didn't have to stress out about all those things when they were younger. Yeah. Um, There's so many things that I knew I wasn't doing for them, you know, like making them do chores, you know, yeah. and yet they turned out where they work, they're both so diligent at their work and I'm so proud of them. And, uh, you know, I didn't do family devotionals with them very often. Yeah. Be, you know, we set the Christian example, got them to church. I did make uh, John, I, I, I kind of set a rule. He was eighth or ninth or ninth grade. And I said, you have to get involved either in the youth group at this church or in Teens for Christ, which was a pair of ministry of, mm -hmm. that, that Enoch had been involved with a lot. And I said, you, you got to do one or the other. You got to have some, you know, association with your peers, Christian peers. Right. Um, so that was about the only rule that I set for them. They, they did go to church with us, of course, every Sunday. Um, but we didn't do like family devotions. I wasn't good at that. I wasn't diligent. And I worried about, you know, will they grow up to love the Lord? Well, John's yeah. pastor and Enoch is a professor at a Christian college and leads a devotional before every class. That's cool. And so, yeah, I guess they turned out okay to love the Lord. Yes. <laughs> so, they, uh, um, so, yeah, that's what I wish I'd have known long ago is that, hey, it, they're going to turn out okay because then yeah. I wouldn't stress so much. Yes. <laughs> It so, is stressful. Yeah. You wonder, <laughs> is, this, is this the right thing to do? <laughs> right. Oh, that's so good. I love that. So if you could give one piece of lasting wisdom in your experience as a father, what would it be? Enjoy your kids. Yeah. Be there with them. Spend time so that you know them. Make them want to want to know you and maintain a relationship with you make it a good experience for them and just enjoy it while it lasts yes so when you said when they say something shocking or tell you something and you're not supposed to overreact how did you keep your cool <laughs> um <laughs> I guess think before you speak. <laughs> so, uh, would you pause, or would you? I don't know. I'm just curious because that's so important. Yeah. You know, maybe I. John probably got in trouble more than Enoch did, and so John would come and tell me, "Hey, Dad, I was walking on the high bridge, which was a railroad trestle, you know, and very, very high across a river, and you'd die if you fell off of it. And walking across it, I mean, they were on the trusses underneath it, I think. I don't remember the details, but very dangerous thing. And it's like, you know, he tells me that, and I got to oh, you did that? <laughs> You really did that, huh? Okay, well, <laughs> you yes. know, and, um, you know, and not just instantly say, you better not ever do that again. You know, right? that's not the right reaction. And so then you talk about it and what was it like and, uh, you know, what would happen if you fell off and make him think through all the thoughts that are going through my mind, get him to think them and verbalize them. So be um, a good question asker. That's yeah. That's kind of what you're saying, too. Yeah. Uh, the, Similar to helping them make decisions. You know, mm -hmm. look at the pros and cons of walking across that bridge. You know, hey, you're with your peers. You know, you're not showing yourself a coward to them. Well, there's the pros. You die. Well, there's the cons, you know. Yes. You, you lose your trust of your parents. Uh, um, so you just think before you speak. and right. say and, and say, no, not how do I want to react to this, but how do I want my son to hear this, right. <laughs> you know, do they want to hear an angry parent or do they want to hear some wise, some wisdom? Right. And so 
you, to communicate wisdom, you have to have a calm attitude. <laughs> Absolutely. So. Absolutely. I'm going to leave it with that. This okay. was really good, Rick. And thank you guys for tuning in. And I think the takeaway that I'm getting from this is you don't have to do all the right things. You don't have to check off all the boxes, but be intentional, be praying, and trust God with your kids. And I just want to challenge everyone watching to do those things. Thank you. I sure got a lot from this, and I, I pray you guys did too, and we cannot wait to catch you next time. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure to follow us on our other social media platforms. We don't want you to miss out on any future content. Thank you so much again, guys. I hope you have a great day, and I want you to know I am personally praying that your roots stay strong.